A few videos back, I did a video on the relationship between bonds and gold, and three things happened. One, I thought I did a really creative and cool kind of James Bond 007 theme. Two, kind of went off the deep end in terms of nerdiness and made a topic really harder than it needed to be. And three, no one watched it. I mean, a few of you did, but really no one watched it. So if you're keeping track at home, that was a three pitch strikeout if you want to talk about it in a baseball analogy. As a result, I'm calling a mulligan and I want to do over. And while Stackers University belongs to all of us, I'm the one that gets to load the video. So that's why we're here right now. So let's try this again. Let's talk about it. First things first, let me give kind of an oversimplified explanation of how bonds work. Bonds are basically offered by an entity, usually the government or a municipality or a company, as a way to raise capital or raise money. In return for you giving them your money, you get an IOU. It's a pretty looking IOU, but it's an IOU nonetheless. And the IOU says that you as the holder of the bond will receive a certain level of interest every year from the entity and at the end of the term, you will get whatever you pay for the bond back. You also get to keep the interest that you've collected along the way. Great, so let's put some real numbers to this. If you purchased a one-year bond for $1,000, the entity would say give you 10% interest for that year. That would be what is referred to as your coupon rate. So simply after a year, you would have collected $1,100. $100 in interest, which was the 10%, that's your yield or your coupon yield, and your original $1,000 back. Now, while that seems really straightforward, when you get into the actual real world of it in the market, you find that bonds can be purchased for less than the bond's face value, which is called a discount, or they can be purchased for higher than the face value, which is called a premium. And so in a very simple way, I'm gonna keep using this $1,000 example for both of these. If a bond is priced at a premium, you will receive a lower coupon yield. And that's because you're paying more for the bond actually. Going back to that $1,000 example, let's say you had to buy that $1,000 face value bond for 1,050, your yield would go down to 5%. And that's calculated simply because you would get your $100 in interest, but you've also paid an extra $50 to purchase the bond. So after the year, you actually would have only made a profit of $50. Therefore, your coupon yield would be 5%. The bond was priced at a discount, then you would receive a higher coupon yield. Going back to that same $1,000 bond, let's say it costs you $950 this time. You would collect your $100 in interest, and then after the year, you would get your original $1,000 back, but you actually paid $950 for it. You would have $150 in profit, and your coupon yield would then be 15%. And so this really becomes the foundation for understanding how bond yields and bond prices work together. And that's why we want to think about it as this kind of teeter-totter relationship that if the price of purchasing the bond goes down, your yields go up. And if the yields go down, the price to purchase the bond goes up. And that's how you get this linear relationship. This relationship between bond yields and bond prices and just the general bond, 10 year bond market in particular is important because they tell us a lot about the economic landscape and general sentiment and really investors use this a lot, uh, the 10 year treasury in particular, to kind of make predictions about where things are gonna go over uh, the long term. So declines in a 10 year treasury usually give us an indicator uh, that there's some caution to be had and, and that there's concern about global economic conditions and vice, and vice versa. If there are gains, that tells us people are more confident about the broader economic indicators. Many economists turn to the bond market to assess the kind of the real health of the economy. As they call it, it's the one true tooth teller. So what does this really have to do with gold? Gold investors should be interested because of the strong correlation or relationship between the 10 year bond and gold prices. That correlation is a negative 0.82, which is a really strong relationship. In other words, when interest rates or real yields go up, gold prices go down. This correlation explains kind of why inflation is gold's best friend while interest rate hikes are its worst enemy. Let's spend a quick second talking about 10 year yields versus the 10 year real yield. The 10 year yield is just what it what the rate says it is, but the real yield actually takes into consideration inflation. When you look at gold and actually instead of looking at the 10 year yield, you look at the real 10 year yield, you really start to see how this relationship is very closely connected. 
And so there are kind of two ways to look at gold prices and real yield. One way is just to plop them both down on a chart. And what you'll see is that gold prices compared to real yields, remember real yield includes the inflation, they tend to move in opposite directions. When one goes up, the other one goes down. But the other way to look at this is to look at it as gold prices with the inverted real yield. And so this chart on the screen shows you how closely connected gold prices are to the inverted real 10 year yield. And while this chart only goes back 20 years, you can see the distance between the lines is pretty consistent and the moves as one goes up, the other one goes up with it. This is the inverted, remember. As the Fed continues to you know, promise to increase interest rates, we know bond yields will go up, which is going to put pressure on gold prices. However, if we're looking at that with the inflation rate, that gives us a little more information. As yields continue to increase, those with cash may find bonds to be more attractive. The real question I have is, will that behavior continue in this high inflationary period where people are actually gonna receive a negative real return for their bond? As Rick Rule likes to say, who's gonna willingly sign up for a return-free risk, meaning, Give me your money and a year later, I'm going to give you back your money that's going to be worth less than what you gave me a year ago. As we enter this period of increasing yields, which is bullish for the dollar, and we continue to see the strength of the dollar remain above 100, and we know that people generally have this desire to run towards safety investments, and we know we have a lot of cash sitting on the sideline, we have to remind ourselves that these are all headwinds for the price of gold. And when you think about it, gold has performed really, really well. Same thing with silver, considering all the things that it's, it's had to fight against. And while we've seen gold and silver rise in the presence of a strengthening dollar, that's not normally the case. But with these yields increasing along with rates, the big question is, what impact will that have on gold? And that's why I've actually haven't purchased anything for about a month now. I just believe that there's a potential for more downside at least in the short term. And actually, if you flip around and watch some of these videos of investors and, and folks talking on YouTube, you'll hear people kind of mention this a little more. Lobo Tigre uh, said something very similar recently in an interview about it. he's holding a lot of money off on the sidelines waiting for this opportunity. Now, I'm not saying I'm on the, Lo the Lobo Tigre level. What I'm trying to share with you is these are the kind of things that folks are looking at. This is the kind of stuff I'm looking at. This is what I want you to be looking at. The more you understand it, the less emotional you'll be about these things. As you've heard me say before, I might be right, I might be wrong, but at least I want you to know and understand what I'm looking at and what I'm basing my analysis off of. With all of these potential headwinds, with interest rate, the strength of the dollar, people potentially running to bonds because of the cash that's sitting on the sidelines, we may just find ourselves sitting in this little 820 to 850, 860 range for a little while now. And I think that's something we're just going to have to ride out until one of three things happen. One, the stock market either fully capitulates and drags metals down with it, or two, the Fed breaks the market and has to reverse course, or three, we end up in a recession, which is why I'm going to let you in on what I call like the precious metal secret sauce based on the idea of looking at the 10 year yield the dollar and gold prices. And what you'll find here, and take a look at the screen here, gold is in yellow, the tips for treasury bonds is in blue, and the dollar is in purple. And what you see is when real yields are falling and the dollar is falling, the price of gold takes off. You can clearly see that in this chart here that's outlined in red. Now I want you to look at this chart again. It's the same chart, but now the red box has moved. When the dollar and the, the tips are going up, gold prices tend to go down. And I think that's what we've been really experiencing and what we have to anticipate here as the Fed continues to increase rates. So your little secret sauce cheat sheet I want you to have here is rising real yields and a rising dollar puts pressure on gold. Falling real yields and a falling dollar acts like a tailwind for gold. In the comments section, let me know if this explanation was better. Pretend like you watched the first video, okay?
Do you have a clear understanding of bond yields and the relationship with gold and how they work together? If you don't want to respond to that, tell us about your last gold or silver purchase. And I want all the details, what you buy and what was the price and what did you pay over spot? Whatever in doubt, you can always go into the comment section and put a letter grade for how well you think you now understand this concept. But no matter what, you will always be my A plus students because you have seen this video all the way through. Always stack smarter and never stop learning.